Hello everyone and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be talking about cloud modulation in Vue 2014. <clears throat> so in Vue 9 or 9.5, one of those two, Eon introduced cloud modulation which allows your clouds to follow the contours of your <clears throat> terrain. Sorry, I'm trying to get over a cold. <clears throat> Anyways. Uh, so it follows the size and shape of your terrain, like the position and size. However, after Vue 9.5, when they re uh, when they released that meta node, they came out with Vue 10, and it changed. And um, there's not a lot of information out there, so I thought I would make a video showcasing exactly what you need to do. So to start, just load up a terrain. It doesn't matter if it's a procedural or standard. I just have one right here that I made in World Machine. And what you want to do is open up your terrain ed or atmosphere editor and add a cloud layer. I added the dense cumulus layer because it gives a really good effect. Um, you also might want to change the scale. You might want to do this after we apply the modulation, but since I was playing around with it, I know what I want. So I'm just going to add it to a scale of 5, and I'm going to drop the density down to 100. And I will call that good for the time being. Next, what you want to do is get a copy of your terrain. So you can do that if you're using a procedural terrain or standard terrain um, inside of a view without exporting a world machine terrain. You can do this easily. Just make sure you go to export terrain right here and uh, browse where you want to export it and f pick a, uh, you can use TIFF Targa or Bitmap. I would probably use Bitmap or Targa. Um, maybe PNG will work, but Bitmap and Targa I know for sure work. And you don't have to save it out as a 16-bit. You can save it out as an 8-bit uh, file. So make a copy of your uh, height map here by using the export option. And you can raise the quality all the way up if you would like when you export it. doesn't really matter. I don't think it really changes anything here if you're exporting the height map for this, but you can have it high as you want or not. I would probably go high just in case. And then after you do that, load up Photoshop or any other um, uh, any other editing program or photo editing program, and you want to load up your map. And what I did in here is you want to have uh, um, pure white and pure black is what you want from the top to the bottom of your map. So what I did is I just went to adjustments and I equalized it. There are probably better ways to do that um, than what I did, but that's what I did and it works. So you need pure white and pure black as, as much as possible. And then uh, when you're done, save it and let's move on. <clears throat> So here's my terrain, I don't need to do anything there, and I already have my cloud layer, so let's go back here. So now at this point, what you should have is your landscape, a copy of your landscape, so you can have your height map. You edited it, you put it into Photoshop, and you edit it, um, edited it to have pure white and pure black. Next thing what you want to do is right-click on your um, cloud image right here, go to Edit Material. You can use altitude offset, height modulation, um, doesn't really matter. I used height modulation and it worked, so I will do that. Next thing is, is you have this constant node. You can go ahead and delete that. Next, click on your meta node options right here and then load up the map to object. After you load up the map to object, go to edit and in the external dependency right here, set the dependency to your terrain to position and then the second one right here set it again to your terrain and then set it to size and call it good that's all you need to do there next load up a uh, projected texture map but change it from a projected texture map to just a texture map and you can connect the height modulation there you can get rid of that connection right here get rid of the UV coordinates and attach this to the map to object and then connect the map to object to position and you should be done that's all you need to do 
now when we go back into our uh, mapping here, what we need to do is make sure that the altitude variations are high so we can see something going on, but you also have to make sure that the size of your clouds equals the height of your terrain. So we have to scale this up to be the height of the terrain like that. And let's see what's going on here. Cloud modulation takes a lot of time, so you got to be very careful. I'm going to change the altitude variations, and hopefully it'll start appearing. It worked for me just a few seconds ago. See, I got... Make sure I, oh, duh, okay. Make sure you load up your map. <clears throat> My bad. So I have the, uh, I have a Targa right here, and that's the map, and there we go. Now it should map properly. Make sure you load up your texture map. I totally forgot to do that. Now it should be good. And when we try again, we have clouds all over the place around the terrain, but not necessarily on it. And that's because we have to adjust the altitude variations. If we have a lot of altitude variation, it should start encompass encompassing the uh, terrain. So we'll just make sure. Okay, so I'm going to try doing a preview render and we'll see what it's doing. I literally had this working right before I started recording this tutorial, so it should work. <clears throat> All right, and as you can see, it's modulating along the actual landscape, um, and that's good. That's what we want. So what we can do to further play with this is we can turn altitude variations up higher. We can also make sure that the cover is a little bit higher. Um, we can also play with like the shadow density and things like that, make it look really good. We can play with ambient lighting. I mean, everything here is exactly the same. It's not really going to change anything. Um, but what we can do to make it, you know, a little bit different on the actual modulation is you can attach different nodes to this. Um, one of them being a filter. You can attach different filters to these to get different looks. Um, and the, it's the exact same thing when you're working in Photoshop and you're making pure black and pure white is if you add a brightness and contrast node to this from the filter, so brightness and contrast, you can further play around with the, uh, the map here where you can have it affect the top parts of your terrain or the bottom parts of your terrain. All you have to do is just play with the brightness and contrast node and then you can get different looks. Um, you can also blend it with different nodes. So if you wanted to throw in like a fractal node and put in a blender node and attach the two, um, then you can play around with that and get different looks in your um, clouds as well. So there's a lot of possibility here, but this is the easiest way to get cloud modulation to work. And, uh, and it seems to be working just fine. So let me just recap real quick on what we uh, on what I discussed here. So you have your terrain that you brought in from you know a different program or you just loaded one in view, and then you um, exported it as a file that Photoshop can read and that view can read, and that's done right here with export terrain. You don't have to worry about converting it up here. This is where you can convert it from a procedural to a standard or whatnot. You don't have to worry about doing that. Just export terrain, browse, save it somewhere, and make sure you choose um, a image file type that can be read by uh, Photoshop and View, so TIFF, Targa, Bitmap, PNG, any of those. Um, you can save it as an 8-bit. You don't have to use 16-bit. I probably recommend 8-bit because it's not as large and it works just fine. And then um, after that, open it up into Photoshop. Uh, make sure that you use an equalizer on it or whatever your favorite m way of getting pure white and pure black um, in on your images. Do that, and then 
inside of the atmosphere settings. Go ahead and load up a cloud layer. I recommend the dense cumulus layer, but that's just me. And you go into the material editor by right clicking on the image, hitting edit material, or you can just double click. And then right here, this is going to be your drive by function or drive with a function option. All you want to do is just click on that and that'll open this up. Next is load up your meta node right there for the map to object. And then make sure you go into your map to object object and set the external dependencies to your terrain that you have. First one is position. Second one is size. And then load up a texture map node and then make sure that it's a texture map and not a projected texture map and if it's if it doesn't come in as a texture map which usually it doesn't just turn it into one and then delete the UV coordinates and then connect it to the map to object and then finally make sure you load up your map that's the one thing I forgot just make sure you load up your map um, whichever one it was and you're good to go. So everything is going to be driven by altitude variations and that's how it um, affects your landscape the most is between altitude variations. So if you turn this all the way up it's going to be a lot of uh, uh, modulation going on and if you turn it way down there's not very much. So just kind of play around with the settings and see what you get. Try to blend different uh, nodes together for your cloud modulation. See what you can get. And then uh, that's pretty much it. I would like to thank you guys for watching. Please comment, rate, subscribe, or share, whichever one. It doesn't really matter. Um, I just appreciate it when you guys do. And you can visit me at www.pwndesign.com. Thank you. Bye.